When you have a function, you're often interested in when it achieves some maximum or some minimum. Consider these three examples. For each of these functions, we can ask, when does it achieve a maximum or a minimum? For this first function, y equals negative x squared from negative 2 to 2. We can look at it and we can see clearly when x is 0, it's at its largest possible value. That's when it's 0. Everywhere else, it's negative. So at x equals 0, we have a maximum. And since the largest maximum over the entire specified domain, we're going to call that an absolute or global maximum. An absolute maximum or global maximum at x equals 0. We can then ask, well, well, what kind of minimums does it have? And notice if you go down, the lowest point at both minus 2 and 2 will be at the same value. When x is minus 2 or when x is 2, you are the lowest possible value, so you have two absolute minimums. They're tied for a minimum value, but they're lower than all the other points. So these are your absolute minimums. How about this graph here? y equals the absolute value of x defined over all of the real numbers from negative infinity to, neg to positive infinity. Well, clearly you have a, a minimum right here again at zero. You have an absolute minimum right there at x is equal to 0. But here you have no maximum because it goes off forever. Since we didn't specify it to a particular range, we're letting it run off forever. This has no absolute maximum. No, no maximum. This keeps getting larger and larger and larger. And then we have our last example. y is equal to x cubed minus x, where x is on the open interval. This is an open interval from negative 2 to 2. Now, now you might want to say, clearly the largest value is here to the right at 2, but, but this doesn't include 2, it's all the values right before 2. You might want to say, well, then maybe the largest values are like 1.9. But no, it's not a 1.9, because you can go a little bit larger if you went to 1.95, or 1.99, or 1.999. You can always get a little bit bigger. So there's not an absolute ma maximum there. There's, there's no absolute maximum. It's a little bit like the previous example where it keeps getting larger. It doesn't go off to infinity, but it does keep getting larger and larger and larger as you come closer to 2. In a similar way, here to the left, there's no absolute minimum because it keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller as you come closer to the negative 2. However, you do have some other points. Like, like for example, right here we have we have this point, and that seems kind of special. It's not the largest point everywhere, because over here there are points that are larger, but it's the largest point locally. We call this a local maximum. You'd have a local maximum at what turns out to be x equals negative 1. And in a similar way, right over here, if you go to x equals positive 1, you're not at the lowest point overall, because there are lower points over here, but locally you're at the lowest point. So we call this a local minimum. If, if we go back to this, to the second graph, you go like, yeah, you just have your absolute minimum, no other minimums. You, you might want to call this a local minimum. You can call it a local minimum, but saying it's an absolute minimum is saying something stronger. Yeah, it's a minimum in this local area, but it's actually a minimum over the whole thing. And same story here. This absolute maximum is, is, is a local min maximum, but it's really a absolute maximum because it's a maximum over the whole defined area. Okay, so we have absolute and we have local maximums and minimums. Fermat, notice something. So Fermat's insight is if you're ever at one of these maximums or minimums, I can call these the extrema, if you're at some extrema, then if you take your derivative, let's say your extrema is at some point x equals c, if you calculate your derivative there, what will it be? Well, there's two possibilities. Often, at extrema like here, here you're at the, the maximum right there, you look at the derivative, you look at the tangent line, you say, well, that tangent line is just going to lie horizontal. But before, it's going up a little bit, but then it lies flat before coming down. So it's just lying flat, its derivative there is 0. Same case over here. If you, if you look here at this local maximum, its derivative is, is going to be 0 because its tangent line is horizontal. 
and at this local minimum, its tangent line is zero. Its slope of its tangent line is zero. So you might think that, that the derivative is always equal to zero. Well, that's not quite right, because remember the middle example. This middle example right here, we had an absolute minimum, but since this is the absolute value graph, this, this function doesn't have a derivative defined at zero. From, from one side is pointing down, from the other side is pointing the other direction, and so the derivative is not defined there. That's another possibility. Your derivative is zero or it does not exist. That also explains why at these endpoints, you know, you can't even calculate the derivative because you, you only have data on one side. So you can't get the limit for both sides for the derivative. And so we would say for these also, the derivative does not exist. So typically it would be zero, but you might have a few funny cases being at an endpoint or at, at some kind of cusp where your derivative does not exist. Now, be careful. We're not saying that whenever the derivative is zero, you're at an extrema. That that's not necessarily the case. For example, if you think about the graph of y equals x cubed, this graph looks something, something like this. And at the point x equals zero, you're right here. Now, your tangent line there will have slope zero. But that's not a maximum or a minimum. You can think that the graph was going up and just took a break for a moment before continuing to increase again. So just because your derivative is zero doesn't mean you're necessarily at an extrema, but if you're at an extrema, you'll either have derivative zero or does not exist. In a similar way, you, you could have some graph where you're at a point, so, so consider the graph like y equals the cube root of x. So this is similar to this one, it's just it's reflected a bit, so that's gonna end up looking more like a cube root of x looks like, um, should look something like, something like this. There we go. So at the point x equals zero right here, you have a derivative that's not defined. If you try to calculate it, it comes out to be vertical, so your derivative does not exist. Just like here, your derivative was zero. But just because the derivative does not exist doesn't mean that you're at a maximum or a minimum. Doesn't mean you're at an extrema. That's neither a maximum nor a minimum. So we have at each extrema, your derivative is zero or doesn't exist, but the converse isn't true.